to get started, I'm going to use a theme that I've provided in the exercise files called Super Basic Theme. And it's just the really just uh, sort of stripped out theme that has the very basic things that you could need for a WordPress theme. And that's a good starting point. It's where I normally start with my WordPress themes. There's a bunch of different themes, starter themes that, that are out there that you can check out. Roots, for example, is, is a big one out there that people use as a system. So, uh, but anyways, let's get started with that super basic theme. I'm going to go into my builds directory. I'm going to go into the WordPress folder, the WP content folder, into the themes. And you'll see I have the default themes here. I'm going to drag my super basic theme in there now, and it is set up. So uh, now uh, click on appearances, and you're going to see super basic theme, and we'll activate it. And you can see it's just default here, uh, the way it's set up. Now, once I have that set up, I'm going to also go and open up those files in Sublime. So if I go back to WordPress, go to my WB content, into my themes, and then I'm gonna drag super basic into Sublime. So now you can see that I have the directory open for that theme. So again, pretty basic uh, CSS, fonts, JS. It's got a footer, it's got functions, header, index, a page about, a page home, a page people page screenshot single people and style and single.php so i've actually set this up to include some boilerplate code for custom post types uh, when you want to query them and for page templates in case you forget the page template syntax so it just goes like this page hyphen about we have the template name about page we have our basic loop and we get the footer so you can see that's really been gutted there's nothing in there that you don't need Here's the index.php page, which just lists the posts inside of an H2. The header page here, uh, which is getting bootstrap uh, and gets jQuery, and then has a little bit of test code here for custom fields when you get there. And we have our screenshot.png, and we have a page home, which has a little bit more test code there if you need it for custom post, uh, for uh, advanced custom fields. So this is a great starter theme to get you going. What we're here for is the page hyphen people. And I'm gonna go through some of the syntax here to uh, get started with that. So the first thing, uh, we need to create a page to list all the people out. And so I'm gonna go to pages and click add new. And then in here, I'm going to say, I could call this about or I could call it people page. I'm gonna go with people. And then uh, over in my templates here, because I've added that theme, I now can select the people page template and click publish. So now if I go to that page and click view page, I got a little bit of a, looks like header, a couple undefined fields. I'm gonna clear that up actually for, um, it just it's just gonna be referencing these advanced custom field options. So uh, we'll clear that up very quickly. Uh, and looks like we have one more on line 19 on the page people. And that would be this line here, uh, which we can remove as well. All right, so uh, in your version, of course, uh, you won't have those things. I'm gonna uh, remove the advanced custom field options inside of this so that you'll be able to reference it without any trouble. So template name people page, and it says args equal array post type people. So here's the very first part, and we could probably clear this up a little bit. I'm assuming at this point that you understand how to use a template name parameter where it says people page, pretty straightforward. And then we've set up an array here of args. So args equal array post type people. And of course you could do this a bunch of different ways using the newer array syntax, which is like that with the uh, square bracket. Uh, would do the same thing. But here we have an array that we've set up and it is a, an associative array with the post type option and the post type option is equal to people and people being our custom post type. So it's already set up for us. Then we take this and we create a new instance called people. So variable new, and this is going to instantiate, basically create or use the WP query class. Now the WP query class is a class to query your database, your custom post types or your posts or your pages or your media. And you may have used that previously. And if you have, this will be pretty easy for you. And we pass it an array. Well, that's the array that we just set up here. Now you could take the value here and just paste the value there. 
that would work just as well. And then you wouldn't need to reference it. But if you're getting something large or you need it to separate like a large array and you want to separate it, you can go ahead and separate it. Now, if we were to look at this value, we could run a var dump or we could do a print r, both will work. So I'll do a print r and say the value for people. And then I'm gonna do a semicolon here and then we'll run it and click refresh. Uh, looks like I made an error on line eight. Uh, post type, eh, forgot the open bracket, there we go. Uh, and you see we have this big array that came out and if we view source on that using command option U on Chrome, you'll see now I scroll down, there's the array and here's the WP query object. So it comes back as an object. Here's the query that we passed in. Here are the query vars. So these are things we could be passing in, continuing on down. Then here's the taxonomy if we wanted to pass in a taxonomy. And then we get down to the data query. And then this is the request. This is what it actually went and ran. So this is a SQL statement where it says select SQL calc found rows WP post ID from the post table where one equals one and the post dot post type is equal to people. So it went and basically wrote that people post type into this SQL query to go and run. Well, most likely you're using WordPress and other systems because you don't want to write SQL directly as um, sometimes it's way easier just to loop through it as a post. And it comes back now if we go down to post as our array and inside of our array is our post object and we can reference any of the values inside of our post object now. Look at that, pretty easy to get started with that. So I'm gonna show you two ways that we can kind of start to reference this uh, data. And the first one is the basic loop. And that's what you have here. Now you may be familiar with, let's say if I go to the about page, if have post, while have post, the post, and while else, sorry, no pages, might say no post, match your criteria, and then end if, right? So this goes to the database and if it gets, if it has an object, comes back, loops through the object, it gets the title value and it gets the content value from it. All right, pretty easy to get going with that, right? That's, that's fundamentally everywhere in WordPress. If I go here, instead of just saying have post, I'm going to pass in the people variable that we've set up with this new object to the have post method. So people have post, while people have post, people, the individual post, and then get me the permalink and get me the title from the post and while and if. Now I didn't do an else. Uh, if you needed to run an else statement, basically you don't have any people, you could go and run an else statement in there. So that's one way to go and reference it. Another way, and that's the standard sort of way to do it. Another way is if you look at your object here where it says WP query, you have that object and you went all the way down to data query, and you'll see the data query kind of lines up and we click on posts. Let's try this one out. And I'm gonna say people, and let's go to the posts, and we'll refresh. Uh, and now we're at the post object space individually. Well, that's pretty easy because now we could just run this as a for each. And I could say people post, and then here for the, uh, I don't need a key, I could just use the individual uh, person now. And that person's going to be each one of these objects. I can then specify, say I want the post title from the person. I could then say person, so person uh, and post title. And of course we wanna echo out this value. So we'll echo it like so. And I'm gonna comment this code out here uh, so that, uh, actually, let's just remove it for now. Uh, and I'll open up PHP there. So now we'll be able to loop through each of the people's uh, values here. So now if you refresh that, you see here, it says Pete and Trevor. And I can reference it now just by that post title, or if I needed to get other values from it, I could go and look inside this object and reference it. And that's sort of a, a traditional way of looking at the object to loop through the data uh, and to very quickly go and reference, say I need post author or something like that. Now that'll get me, that's basically hard coded because post author is gonna be one, which would be my current user ID. I can't do too much with that. I could run a couple other functions from it, 
but it's not going to open up all those values that I get with the loop, right? When I use the loop, I get all of that other stuff. And when I'm talking about that other stuff is to be able to write the title um, as I've written here and the permalink as I've written here. I would need to dynamically set those up uh, if I'm using the other method here with the for each loop. But depends on your use case, you could set that up and pass it to some system. Maybe you're sending it over to JavaScript and setting up a dynamic uh, uh, variable and that I can then pass over to my JavaScript and I could set this up this way or use the REST API inside WordPress. So to keep that in mind is those are the two options that you can go and use. Again, this is the most basic option for setting it up. Now, the rest of this code is pretty much standard. The permalink, the title, you should be familiar with those things now from basic WordPress um, and to looping through those data. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to uh, create a custom post type without using custom post types. Maybe you don't want to give your client uh, or you don't want to set up the site with the functionality to create or see the ability to create custom post types. And you just want to include that code in your functions.php.